Hey guys, welcome back to Father and Son Investing. We are going to talk about Endra again today. They had their fourth quarter earnings result yesterday. We'll give you an update. I want to talk to you also about one of their partners that they're going to be working with. And I also want to talk to you about uh, something that I saw at the RSNA conference uh, concerning fatty liver disease. All right, so just a quick synopsis for those of you who aren't familiar with this company. Endra is commercializing the thermoacoustic enhanced ultrasound. It is a technology that will enhance existing ultrasound systems so that they can measure the amount of fat within a liver. Now, who cares about fat in a liver and why is that important? Well, about 1.4 billion people in the world are affected by excess fat within the liver. Uh, that's not always a problem, but for some of those people, that will become something called non-alcoholic steatohepatitis, which can be a problem and can lead to cirrhosis as well as a liver cancer. Now, here's a slide that came from the RSNA conference. RSNA is Radiologic Society of North America. They have their annual meeting after Thanksgiving every year. This was from a radiologist at the University of Pittsburgh. Now, University of Pittsburgh is one of the sites that has been working with Endra in terms of testing their device. So the radiologist there uh, gave this statistic. He first, he talked about obesity as an epidemic. Uh, certainly, that is the case. Uh, but associated with that then is non-alcoholic fatty liver disease. And the prevalence of that in the United States, he quoted at 22 to 45%. Then he said that uh, roughly a third of those, 32 to 37%, so we'll take a third of those people of the 22 to 45% are going to progress to cirrhosis of their liver. So that is a third, roughly, of a third of the population. So one-ninth of the population, if we're doing the math, is looking at developing cirrhosis uh, due to excess fat accumulation in their liver and developing steatohepatitis. To quote him, he called it a public health nightmare. So along comes Endra. They have developed this thermoacoustic ultrasound which has a way of measuring the amount of fat within a liver. Now, there are other ways to measure fat in a liver. You can do that either through a liver biopsy, which involves somebody putting a needle into your liver and the potential complications of that, or through MRI, which uh, is not very convenient when it comes to trying to measure a lot of people. Uh, again, 1.4 billion people in the world. Uh, that's a lot of MRI machines to try to uh, do that. Now, there are already about 400,000 ultrasound machines that could be uh, used to assess uh, fatty liver. Ultrasound itself is not very good at assessing the qu or quantifying the amount of fat within a liver. It essentially can just tell you, hey, the liver doesn't look normal. And, and quite honestly, uh, because I read these scans all the time, it's not just fatty liver that causes that appearance on ultrasound. There are a number of diseases that can do that, so it's not very specific. So along comes uh, Teus, uh, the thermoacoustic uh, ultrasound from Endra, and they can do this in a matter of minutes at about 1 50th of the cost of performing an MRI. So this uh, technology can be a game changer. That is essentially the synopsis of this company. Now, what did we get out of the fourth quarter earnings report? Uh, they had previously announced a, a couple of weeks ago that they had formed a partnership with Hepion Pharmaceuticals. Uh, Hepion Pharmaceuticals, if you're not familiar with them, let's just touch on them briefly because they're quite interesting. Hepion Pharmaceuticals, as you might imagine, uh, is making drugs for liver disease. Now, they have a drug called CRV431 that is in clinical uh, trials. They have passed their phase one clinical trial and they're working now for phase two. The way that this drug works is that it binds to these uh, cyclophilins, multiples of uh, different kinds of which are in the liver, uh, and this drug then can prevent multiple different stages of liver disease. So as we mentioned earlier, fatty liver disease is gonna become a public health nightmare. Between all of that fat that we eat or sometimes just due to genetics or other factors, the fat can accumulate within liver cells. The liver cells are called hepatocytes, and particularly, fat can accumulate within the mitochondria of a liver. It, you may remember from your biology days, the mitochondria are the powerhouse of a cell. When that fat accumulates within those mitochondria, it can make them uh, rupture, essentially, and they release all sorts of chemical factors. Those chemical factors leak out into the liver and surrounding uh, blood vessels and other tissue. 
those released chemicals um, bring in inflammatory cells into the liver. Those inflammatory cells then start a cascade of problems. They release more chemicals, which then cause cells within the liver to uh, secrete material that causes the liver to fibrose. And Hepion's drug can interact with all of the cyclophilins that cause the mitochondrial damage, the inflammation, and the fibrosis. This drug is still in its clinical stages for testing, and the reason that this partnership with Endra can be so valuable is that it's hard for a drug company to figure out, number one, who has this disease, uh, and then number two is the drug that they're using actually affecting the amount of fat within a liver. Right now, they have to do that with MRI. MRIs are expensive. We're looking at about $5,000 per scan, and they take time to do. They, a TEA scan takes you know a minute, and an MRI uh, scan can take up to 30 minutes, depending on all the things that they do. Now, Hepion will be able to screen patients initially using the Teus uh, system to see whether they even have uh, enough fat in their liver to be worth treating. That will pay massive dividends for them because they won't waste a bunch of time doing MRIs on people who aren't going to be candidates for their study. Now, Hepion is just one of a number of companies who are currently studying non-alcoholic steatohepatitis called NASH. Uh, there are about 50 drugs in the pipeline. And a lot of drugs just don't ever make it to the final end product of being able to treat people. We're looking in the range sometimes of around 15% or even less of those drugs that finally make it to market. So Endra has the potential to work with multiple different pharmaceutical companies when it comes to studying this disease. What else is Endra doing right now? Well, right now they have six sites that are currently doing a study to uh, assess the efficacy of this system so that once the FDA clearance comes through, uh, they will have additional data uh, to market to uh, physicians and other healthcare providers. Now, the FDA clearance is not dependent on these current studies. They announced that currently their global patents for this device uh, stand at 82 of them, so that's helping to create a nice moat for them when it comes to this process. They announced, uh, uh, this has previously been announced, but they reiterated that they have continued their partnership with GE Healthcare for the next two years. GE makes a lot of ultrasound systems, and GE will have first priority on being able to use this device on their systems. Now, they reported that they strengthened their balance sheet. Of course, the way that they do that is by selling additional shares of stock, which, of course, uh, dilutes the stock. Uh, this company is not making revenue, so any... Uh, any cash that they receive is either going to be through stock or issuing a bond. As far as the financial results, they did mention that their operating expenses uh, increased to 11.5 million from 10.8 million year over year. Uh, their net loss improved. They were only down 11.7 million, which is 63 cents per share, instead of 13.3 million, which is uh, $2.34 per share. Of course, the reason the cents per share looks better is there's a lot more shares out there. They reported at the end of uh, 2020, December 31, 2020, their cash equivalents and cash were 7.2 million. From their most recent investor presentation, which as of March of 2021, uh, they're saying that on February 28th, their cash balance is 9.5 million. So you can see that they don't even have enough cash on hand to run the company for a year, and that will uh, likely result in the issuance of more shares and further dilution this year. Now, on the conference call, they did talk about the commercialization of this device. Of course, they have CE clearance in Europe, and they have uh, two salespeople, one in uh, Great Britain and the other one in Germany. It's a little difficult to sell during a pandemic, though, and uh, they really have not generated any revenue out of this yet out of Europe. The plan is to hire additional salespeople in Europe. Uh, they're continuing to uh, market their device. Well, they, they can't actually market it, but they're con continuing to demonstrate their device at uh, medical conferences where end users would uh, use this. So places like gastroenterologists and radiologists. All right, that's the end of this presentation on Endra. The take-home point out of it is uh, they lost less money than they did the year before. Uh, they still don't have FDA clearance yet, and there's no actual date for when that'll happen. They're not the only ones suffering from this slowdown with the FDA. I've looked at at least two other medical devices that are still waiting on FDA clearance or approval and uh, no idea when this will actually happen for a lot of these devices, I think.
Let me reiterate, get the young people in your life investing. If you're wondering why I'm wearing this orange outfit, it's because I'm going running. So get the young people in your life and yourself out exercising as well. Until next time, enjoy your investing.